Well, on this beautiful afternoon, I'd like to welcome you to our, now what? It's still not working? Oh. <laughs> It's going to be one of those days, folks, but just as soon as we get beyond the, in, beyond the intro, which I'm doing right now, everything's going to be perfect. <laughs> so while I'm talking about perfect things, here we go. In the event a fire alarm sounds, please remain in the auditorium and stay seated. Should there be a need to evacuate, a Springmore staff member will direct you on how to leave in an orderly fashion. Please remember not to use the elevators and to go to a red pole once outside. And now one of the very pleasurable things that I have is to introduce you to some of our new residents. So I'm going to start out with Joe and Ruth Donnelly. Welcome. Jane Norris, my neighbor, welcome. Sandy Callahan. Hello. And R.G. and Beth Cobb. I believe they moved in about three days ago or something. I mean, we're getting to them early. And now I would like to have you meet and listen to Lori Higgins, our chaplain. Lori? <laughs> oh, you did. You, I saw her. Lori Higgins and I as chaplains are interchangeable. Um, we're working on being so, um, so I apologize for that. Um, just a few announcements, just what's going on in the next couple of days. Um, tonight at 7.30, we have our monthly dementia caregiver support group here in the auditorium. Um, we'll have some light snacks, and this is for people who care for someone with dementia. Um, and it is open to the community as well. Um, at the same time in South Village, we'll have the second Monday social group in the Carolina room. So if you're caring for someone and would like them to have a place for fellowship um, while you're with us, that is over in South Village in the Carolina room. Um, tomorrow, we have two groups and I wanted to bring this up just because we've added a new group. We have a group called Changes which is a place for anyone who is going through any changes in their life whether it's grief or if it's simply a change in where you're living or any kind of change in life it's a discussion group. Um, so beginning tomorrow we will have one at 10.30 in South Village in the Carolina Room. And, sorry, and then the regular monthly one here in North Village will be at two o'clock tomorrow, which is a little bit earlier, and we'll meet in the chapel parlor and we'll put signs up for that. But if you've not ever come, just please join us. Um, and it's a great little group of people. Um, and then also tomorrow, from three to four o'clock here in the auditorium, we'll begin the first of our four Lenten Bible study groups. And again, everybody is welcome. Um, and you should have gotten a flyer in your boxes about that. Um, so thank you and hope to see many of you at some of our events. Thank you, Chaplain. <laughs> okay. Now it's time to introduce a man who today is going to wear three different hats. He's going to introduce some very special guests. He's going to give you the inside scoop on resident life, and then he's going to do the program. So please welcome Brandon Hare. Thank you. Hope y'all still be clapping when I'm done. It's good. Um, well, it's great to see everybody here. Everybody must have knew that David and Kyle were coming to speak, so that's why we have such a big crowd. So, um, so I'm glad to see everybody. It's a packed house, which is great. Um, 
Before we get started, I wanted to recognize a couple of people. Um, first of all, I did mention um, David Ammons and Kyle Dilday from our management group. They're both here today, so I wanted to recognize them. They're here and help me every day with stuff at Springmore. And then also any board members we had. I looked around. I know Mr. Calloway is here. Uh, Mr. Marley on endowment board, are you Mr. Marley in the back? And anybody else the board here? I didn't see anybody else. I want to make sure I recognize them. Okay. And then lastly, I'd like to... Um, recognize the, man the members of the Management Advisory Committee. They helped me a great deal and they helped put together this program and the fact that they gather the questions from the residents, they give me suggestions and then they submit them to me for me to look at and to answer for each of you. So if you're on the Management Advisory Committee, can you take just a second and just stand up or raise your hand so y'all can, can be recognized? All right. It's a great committee. So we, we get started earlier every year. <clears throat> now the past two years because we do this new format of doing the semi-annual meeting, um, answering questions at the first semi-annual meeting and doing the financial presentation at the second one. So thank you all for meeting early and adjusting your schedules. Um, <clears throat> got a little bit of information here from um, Leah that I want to read and then, um, then we'll get into answering the questions. And, um, and then I'm going to do a little quick highlights of 2019 and then uh, Mr. Amos is going to close us on a statement. So Leah wanted me to make sure that everyone knows um, the Meraki Art Studio, a couple of safety items. Um, they want to make sure everybody enjoys the studio, but please wear closed-toed shoes if you're in the studio. Um, please do not bring drinks in without lids. So I've had a couple of accidents and we love our furry friends, but the studio is no place for Fido or a dog, I guess, maybe a cat as well. And then um, also, stop by the studio and check out the new exhibit by Barbara Rogers. So we always have great exhibits by residents here, so I've not seen that one yet, but I'm sure it's great. So go by and check that out and, um, and see what's going on there. All right. Thank you, Ms. Lord. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and start off with some highlights for the year. I'd like to re or from the previous year, I'd like to recap a few things we've done to see, for y'all to see some progress we made and, and kind of, it kind of helps answer some of these questions as well, but I think it's important to see what we've done. And this is a new ad that we have, and um, you may see some familiar faces in there, um, but the Springmore, uh, Raleigh's retirement that simply has it all. So we did a photo shoot last year of um, some new, um, just a new photo shoot, and we have our new literature out this year. This is our first new ad, so I wanted to start off with that. I think it looks really nice, and hopefully we'll get a lot of good comments from that. So as we go on from marketing, um, the first part of that, um, you've heard us talk a lot about this. We maintain 100% occupancy for the majority of the year. Again, this is about the third year running, so that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, we had 42 new move-ins for the year, uh, received 88 new wait list deposits, had 650 appointments, 3,069 connected calls, generated over 100 new leads, and at the, at the end of the year, we had 29 second generation residents that were living at Springmore. So if you remember, we had a 35th anniversary earlier this year, and we recognized all the um, current second generation residents and then employees that's been at Springmore for 25 plus years. Let's highlight some marketing. Move on to buildings and grounds. Well, buildings, I have buildings and grounds separated this year. Um, so we had a lot of accomplishments. Uh, renovate the Garden Cafe in North Village. I think everybody knows about that. We've created a wonderful new activity space and dining room and supportive living. Uh, we transformed the Old Wells Fargo Bank branch into two things, a business center and a satellite bank for first citizens. That seems to be going really well. I'm very pleased with that area. We painted all 46 houses and villas and only a few that didn't like it. So I was pretty pleased out of 46. That, that ran pretty well and they all ended up coming around at the end. So we got that done. Hope to do South Village this year on our list. So hopefully we can announce that next year at this time. Um, and then we installed new flooring from the North Village dining room, from the waiting area there in that lobby, all the way to the great room. We had that carpet there that was faded and had some weird shadows on it, so we, that was a nice improvement we did. Grounds, um, 30 holly trees around North Village that, that we removed. Many of y'all know that the holly trees were overgrown. They were kind of starting to go over the building, up close to residences and balconies, so we removed 30 of those. Um, removed 24 pine trees behind the houses and the villas in our neighborhood area. That was led by a couple of residents and, and, and Tom Morgan. We got a few more we need to look at as well. 
Uh, we began major landscaping projects to enhance our main entrances and other focal areas. We're still working on that. Right now we've completed both the main entrance for North Village, South Village, um, the main portico share at North Village where you come in the flagpole. Um, also, I know that they've worked on the little bench area right in front of the first set of villas on the left. And then um, the circle back around east. And we got a, two or three other areas to finish and then we'll be completed with that. And we constructed two new fences in resident parking areas, one behind East and the other one behind um, South Village. It's kind of just a nice separation of, the, um, of our area and the houses behind there and the apartment complex. And then we also retained a new and improved landscaping company, which I've heard a lot of good compliments from, and I can't be more pleased with Carolina Outdoor, and they're doing a fantastic job. as set up by a guy named Chris Lambert that we have. So <clears throat> he also does all of our tree work and gutter cleaning. Um, pathways, we had 1,792 total exercise classes. That's huge, 84 of those, uh, 84 more than, than, the, than, than 2018. Um, I'm sure Miss Charlene Young probably attended most all of those. Maybe Miss two, but where's Miss Charlene at? I just saw her earlier. There she is. Did you attend all of them? Pretty close, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Um, total attendance for group exercises, um, 16,312, and that's, and that's 1,693 more than, than 2018. So you can see wellness and exercise is extremely popular here. That's one reason we had to move it to the, to the great room, just a large volume we have, which is, which is unbelievable. Um, something we introduced last year, it was an idea I had, and I'm really excited to see personal training we had 154 sessions of personal training um, for the, for our first full year and that's done on a um, as need basis it's an extra fee and you go in and you get assessed and if you want to do a personal training you pay for it just like you would to get your hair cut or or one of our or certain service like that and the whole idea is just to offer it to you it's not to make any money we just break even off of it but the the important thing is that we had 154 sessions I know Miss Monica used it a lot this year I'll just call her out because I know she raved about it and she went on a trip with her daughter so I know that was very helpful and some other people as well um, we celebrate our 35th anniversary which I talked about a few minutes ago which is amazing it highlighted the second generation residents and 25 year plus employees and we successfully hired Miss Lori Higgins our new co-chaplain um, wonderful lady I hope y'all all got to know her she's a fantastic chaplain so glad to have her dining services um, this was a big effort led by a group of residents that started a couple years ago for biodegradable containers. So we've implemented biodegradable takeout containers for all of North and South Village. That's been w really well received. We've updated our premium entree choices. We added appetizers to both the Springs and Willow Springs each Sunday. Created a new welcome sandwich platter on the day of the new resident move-in. That's just to help residents on their first day unloading boxes. You know, you don't really know where to go, dining room, scan your card, where do you sit, seat, you go out, pick something up. So it's just a way just to, for convenience to just give you something to eat on a busy day like that and to give you a little orientation from Jennifer and Adam. Um, we also increased our offerings with the Garden Cafe. As I mentioned earlier, we did um, renovate that and enhance it and enlarge it. So we were able to offer more options like the Bistro in um, South Village and also add some grab and go items as you see listed there. And then lastly, we served a total, not including the cafe or the bistro, which gets a ton of meals, as y'all know. We served 283,633 meals in the dining rooms last year. So that's, that's pretty amazing. So. Um, it's a good example. They can't all be perfect, but that is a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good indication of just the volume we do every year, not including the garden, cafe, and the bistro. So just some neat facts there. And then lastly, on operations, which kind of sum all of this up. Um, in general, we exceeded our budget operating income goal, which is always a goal and a target. So we thankfully hit that. Um, came in under in total operating expenses for the year. Um, we achieved a positive net income for the year. And then for the first time, we were able to cover all residents' subsidies for the year with a change in our policy. I think everybody knows we changed our policy from the endowment fund to where we will donate up to 100% of the interest and dividends on the, on the um, endowment fund to help pay for all of the resident subsidies. Um, last year, we were able to do that. Um, we're projected to do it again this year. Um, hopefully, the stock market will go back up eventually, um, but, uh, but we are on track to hopefully cover that for the year as well, for 2020. So that was a great um, accomplishment, I thought I wanted to make sure I highlighted. So 
that is all I have as far as question, um, as far as some highlights. I did want to make sure everybody saw that. And then we'll jump in here to our questions. Y'all ready to go? All right. Some of these are a mixture of questions and some of them are suggestions. I'll, I'll point out the ones that are suggestions and questions. The first one is a suggestion. And, um, and a lot of people sign their names this time. I won't say who they were when I read them, but it's always nice when you do sign your name because then I can go back and I can ask you, did I answer it, you know, thoroughly enough for you? Um, then they can contact me, and I know who, they're, who they are when they say, hey, I'm the one that submitted about the recycling. So that's great. Always submit your name. Um, it's, it's, I can't answer everything fully in here because it would take forever if you say I got nine questions, but it's probably 100 pages worth of stuff. But, um, but it does help me um, go back and answer more thoroughly if you ever have questions. So anyway, the first one is a suggestion for recycling, and it's – I suggest that we use some um, picture directions to help improve our recycling services through an article called Recycling 2.0. And it's a very good article. We read that. Um, Mr. Charlie Bryan. Is Mr. Bryan in here today? It's Ryan in the back. Mr. Bryan is on our Building and Grounds Committee, and he's going to be heading up our recycling efforts. And our next Building and Grounds Committee meeting, we're going to introduce this article to Mr. Bryan. He's already got some flyers and some literature he's going to be posting in the rooms to help with that, and this will help with this effort. So this was a good suggestion I'm going to, um, that Mr. Bryan will have next week at our Building and Grounds Committee. So thank you, for resident, for submitting that to help with our recycling efforts. Next one was... Some issues regarding our gutters. Y'all may see when it rains really heavy how our gutters can hold up. And um, the summary, and I want to thank Mr. Marley and the MAC for summarizing these. Again, some of the questions are very long and detailed, and they have to be to get their point across, but it's impossible for me to read all of them due to time constraints. I'm going to read the summary, and I'll answer them. And again, I've tried to speak with every resident that submitted a question so I had a better idea of what they were talking about so I could answer more thoroughly and specifically. But if not, again, I'm always here to help you. Um, summary, during heavy rain, gutter failures have been observed all over North and South Village with water pouring down on both sides of the building. There was a water problem in South Village storage area and gutter problems all over campus should be addressed with kitchen renovations in that's in progress in the Stewart Health Center renovations. So I was able to meet with this resident and talk about that and explain a little bit about the gutters. Our gutters were cleaned twice a year. Uh, they were last cleaned late December, right before Christmas Eve, and they'll be cleaned again early April, um, late April, early May. Um, but what happens with the gutters, they're not necessarily failing, is when there's such a heavy rain in a short amount of time, the, the, the ma our roofs are huge. If you ever saw on top of them, just the amount of roof space and water coming off those, those size roofs, the, the gutters, they just, they just overflow uh, like a waterfall. It's not that they're not catching it and, they're, and it's, it's clogged up. They're just actually going over it. So it's just the amount of rain. It usually happens when it's a really, really heavy rain. It happens to my house as well. But they are cleaned twice a year, but I do encourage you, if there are certain specific areas that you feel are an issue, please let Tom Morgan or Randy Horton know, and then we'll address it in the building and grounds, and um, and then also, we're hopefully get out there the next heavy rain to see if we can find um, some of the areas that are, that are bad, as resident was able to give me a couple of areas, but just, just be mindful that they're not necessarily failing, it's just the amount of rain and a heavy rain they just can't keep up with, so um, good information on that. Um, the next one um, actually involves this screen right here. So we've had this screen here for a long time. We use it for presentations like this. So Mr. Brian in the back may not have been able to see the presentation very good. If, if, if anything, maybe the very top two bullet points. So it was brought to my attention a while back to move the screen up a little further so it will hang down more here so everybody can see it. Um, so I thought that would be an easy fix. So I got with Daniel and Randy and Richard. and So let's just move the screen up. Well, it's a little more complicated than I thought. So um, <laughs> yeah, everything's going to be easy. That's not always the case. So um, long story short, I am, I've not forgot about it. We're still working on it. We've um, contracted with a guy named Don Rice, who's an AV specialist here in town that we use. And Daniel with our IT department is working with him to have him come in to see the best position for the screen, if we need to move the projector back to that back opening there, um, and then also all the wiring we may have to redo. So we're working to do that. I do realize that's a problem, and we can enhance it, and hopefully we'll just move it up here. It will kind of roll up and down like it is now, but a little closer so everybody can see it. So we'll have that soon. 
Uh, the next one is visitor parking over in East. Uh, I actually saw this resident right before I came in because I wasn't able to see her or meet with her before the meeting. Um, but I did go check on those. Um, the, the issue was that the visitor parking spaces in East are not well marked as they are in West. And, um, and at times cars and other vehicles without spring more stickers are parked near the building entrances. And some residents are not displaying their spring more stickers in accordance with the resident manual. So um, I did go check the East um, parking visitor spots. They have been repainted as of very recent. There's one that's, that's not repainted. I assume that car was in the place. Tom does that. Usually early spring, but the warm weather, he's probably hit it already. It is kind of does feel like spring. So he got that most recently and got to get that last space. Um, and then um, we've got five spots out the, down the far right-hand corner. So they are clearly marked, but I'll take to the Building and Grounds Committee if we want to do some maybe some kind of signage um, that has – in front of the five or maybe a big sign with some arrows pointing you know, right and left to the five spots right there. Um, I see if that will help. And I did um, just want to lay my eyes on the, the sign when you come in that says resident parking and then all visitor spaces as, as marked. So we do have a sign up. Maybe it needs to be a more grandiose sign that you can see a little bit better. But, um, but I do think the, the parking is, um, the striping has been well improved, but we'll see how we can enhance that over in East. Um, the next one deals with the main lobby. A resident had a um, suggestion and concern that um, the reception area and the entrance of Springmore North Village, our, our, our new, well, it's newer main portico share entrance, um, it, for a first impression, it doesn't compete with other retirement communities. It's not as bright and cheery. Um, it's, it needs to be updated with some newer chairs, repainting, brighter materials. Um, some of the some of the some of the fabrics were faded and worn and just doesn't look as good as it first did and and of course they want spring more to be very uplifting and um, welcoming to all residents and want for these to be considered in future plans so um, I met with Miss Robinson who's over the um, decorating committee we went down there and looked at it and you know I personally think it's a, a nice entrance I think it looks good um, we've recently had the couches and chairs recover because they were faded from the sun um, our interior decorator came out and, and did that for us but I also have a meeting with him tomorrow about something else so we're going to go look at that area and see if he can offer any suggestions that may be along the lines of some of this to see if he can a new piece of furniture, maybe um, a color, new color paint on the wall or something to brighten it up if he feels that's necessary. But um, I think it's a pretty entrance. I don't think it's dated or faded, but um, sure it can be improved in some way, just like some of the other areas here at Springmore. We do want to stay up to date, so I'm glad she did bring that up as a, as a suggestion. All right. So the next one I have here is a summary of a good many questions. I think this one... So this, this particular resident had some really good suggestions and questions, but there are 11 of them. And, um, and I can't address all 11, but again, as I said earlier, the, the MAC did a good job of summarizing these for me until about six questions. So I'm going to read the summary and I'm going to answer each one. And again, it's a resident. I know him very well, so he'll come and see me if it doesn't answer everything. Um, good point right here. Um, there are suggestion boxes, but Springmore has no suggestion system. That's a very good point. Those boxes are dated, they're old, and we don't use them anymore. Um, suggestions are done by playing phone calls, emails. I get a lot of suggestions from a lot of people, um, from papers as um, emails, but they're all very good suggestions and um, through committees. So a lot of that's evolved over time and those boxes have, haven't changed. So we do need to probably look to take those down. Um, there's even a function on the portal that we can give feedback and suggestions. We hadn't activated yet that because... Um, we just haven't done that. But, uh, but yeah, more email, phone calls, committees. We do suggestions now. Um, also mentioned having all of the um, – having labeled switches for someone responsible for dimming the overhead lights in an auditorium – in the auditorium during performances. So I did check the lights last week, and they are all labeled. They do have – what each thing is and what it goes to. And I just think the person that's actually conducting the performance, if it's a resident or if it's Brenda or somebody in Life in Richmond, we just need to ask the performer if they want the lights down or up. Um, but they are clearly marked over there. Um, raise the movie screen um, to um, closer to the resident audience, which we just talked about that. We're working on that. So that was another suggestion from a resident. Um, lower wall telephones and height of signs is appropriate for the predominant height of resident population. 
Um, these are the, the, the telephones on the walls, as you see right out here at di the different entrances. I've not had any concerns about that. We'll continue to look at that, but we're not going to change that right now until it becomes an issue. Um, position signs on glass shelf in South Village in a way that's easier for residents to see and read. I think that's a, that's a quick fix. I mean, that's, you know, those little signs they put up for the daily specials or maybe the ice cream flavors. We can bring those down a little bit, and I can, um, I can definitely make that happen pretty easy. Um, print the Pathways movie guide on the back cover for convenience. I don't know if that's something y'all used to have, or I know the reoccurring things were, but um, I'm going to let Leah's out today, but um, Brenda, we'll check with her, and I think maybe asking um, Resident Life about that at the next committee meeting if that's something they want to do. I'm just not familiar with how the movie guides were on the back. Um, and then the next one has to deal with, um, with font style here. Um, these are several suggestions um, to use yellow or white chalk instead of green on a menu blackboard. I do agree with that. I'll make sure we do have easy to read yellow and green chalk on um, chalkboards. I have a hard time myself reading that. Um, and then last suggestion was to implement universal screen board documentation rules for written communication requiring font size, 13 or 14 serif fonts, minimum use of bold face or italics and proper colors, contrast best for elderly vision. So, um, and it goes to say um, which the most common, which is Times Roman. That's the one I use most of the time. Probably not at a 14, I use it at a 12. So we'll get together with, the, with Holly, who does the resident memo, uh, Mr. Ald, who, do, who does the Herald, and some other publications, and see if we can come up with a standard font that may be better for everybody to read. That may be um, something quick to do and something that will help everybody. So that's some um, good suggestions. Um, the next one is, again, a mixture of five questions and suggestions um, that were um, pretty long, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to summarize these as well. Um, they range from a bunch of different topics. Um, the first one is, uh, pertains to the South Village Dining Room Service. Um, some of the issues they raised were not attentive, um, working to get tables reset instead of serving, um, once the tables are reset, they're not reset properly, supervisor not being well trained, and, um, and then all servers being evaluated on a, on a weekly basis. Um, so the resident want to know um, what's going on to improve that and can we be assured that the lack of attention will be addressed. Um, I can assure you that George is working on that every day and that we continue to train um, staff members of how to serve and reset tables and be attentive to, to residents. I know a lot of the employees like the, um, the young staff. They do need to be trained. I, I can assure you George will be working on that to, to fix those issues. The next one um, pertains to South Village Security. Um, the issue was we, evenings and weekends and overnights. So there's too many tasks for the guards to do. They're over at South Village. And um, that is the case sometimes during the day. You know, the security guard, even Mr. Jim Davis, who's there all the time, he doesn't sit at that desk all the time. He has to deliver mail, let housekeepers in rooms and do certain things. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we do have a, on the weekend, a receptionist there and a guard on second shift. And on the week, we should have a receptionist and a guard as well there. Um, we've had one gentleman out for a while, um, out on leave. So we're trying to piece that together. But, um, but every day, there is a guard over there. And they do have many duties. So we may need to look at splitting that up a little bit and having some people do maybe mail deliveries and, and you know, letting people in rooms. But um, that was the issue with security. Um, South Village Bar, um, the feels that the bar in the valley is way too small and needs to be enhanced. Um, I guess that could be a good problem, you know, everybody's using the bar, which is good. It is a small bar, it's a very nice bar, and um, these were just some, so, so, <laughs> so yeah, so, so it's getting some good use, so that's, that's great. Um, but a couple of suggestions was where to put it, where to convert it. One was into the Carolina room. Um, I don't, I don't want to do that. I, I like the Carolina room the way it is and how it's set up for different functions and, and different meetings we have in there. And, the, um, and another idea was to convert the, um, the bar into a private dining room. Um, that's a good idea. I don't know where we, it doesn't solve the problem of putting the bar somewhere. So, so that's something we need to look at. Um, you know, space is always a challenge, but um, lease is being utilized a lot, and we'll continue to, uh, to evaluate that. Um, the next one pertains with independent living residents in South Village. Um, so I'll read some, some of the summaries. Um, resident feels that South Village looks less like an independent living community and more like a nursing home. Um, 
There's a large number of walkers outside the dining room. The Phil's residents in South Village are Phil's residents in South Village that are true IL should um, should only associate with similar people. And apartment-bound residents do not contribute to social life at Springmore. Um, and then lastly, a large number of residents say they will not move to the Stewart Health Center and higher health. Um, so I first want to say that 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 can't happen. You cannot stay in your apartment and hire help 24 seven. So <clears throat> that's why people ha um, eventually have to move to the health center where a continuing care retirement community. So you can't age in place in your apartment. You can have help from home care, but you can't have continuous 24 seven help. That's one of the thresholds or something even before that to go to the health center. So, so that cannot be possible. There are certain circumstances when somebody's on hospice and it happens really quick in independent living. But no, you cannot stay in independent living and have help around the clock. Um, as far as um, the walkers, they're everywhere. I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't think that having a walker makes you any less independent. I think it keeps you independent. So, um, so I know um, many people that were didn't have walkers at first at this job and previous jobs, and then kind of complain about the walkers and eventually they get a walker and that kind of changes tunes a little bit you know so it, it is a problem as far as storage and area every community i go to they're everywhere but again i don't think that um that uh, having a walker makes you any less um independent again it keeps you more dependent and lastly i just want to point out that we do have a review committee that s carefully selects all the residents to come in independent living um just because someone doesn't seem perhaps a spry or um, as perhaps you are, doesn't mean that they're not independent living. We have a we have a medical review, a financial review, and then we have a nurse oversee this to make sure they can function in independent living. Um, and a lot of times they can, and they have to go to a different level of care. But there are different functioning independent levels. So just be sure there is a committee that looks at that and reviews that. So that does not go un, unnoticed and, um, and, and unaddressed. And... Um, the lastly, um, the last one deals with um, some parking issues over in South Village um, uh, about enforcing um, parking. One of them was about having home care aides make sure they have a, a certain sticker on their car. They are issued a yeller, a yeller, a ye <laughs> yeah, yeller. That's right, yeller. <laughs> so that's a, a South Carolina accent. So um, though we do issue a yellow sticker for the home care aides to put in their, to hang in their car, that does just um, denote that they're a home care worker and they do need to be parked in the, in the resident, and in the employee parking lots. We just know that those are not Springmore employees and that they are actually contracted workers. The hard part is getting them to do that. So again, as I encourage y'all all the time, you're more than welcome to have outside home care. We just need to know so we know who they are, make sure they got the right parking pass, make sure they're signing in, and we just know who's on campus. That's a lot of times of people taking up parking spaces or aren't unmarked cars or not hanging them in there, and they're taking up the spaces. So please just make sure if you have a home care sitter um, that's not employed by Springmore, just let us know. Um, there was another part to that. Um, let's see. Right here, um, enforcing parking rules and leaving warning tickets on cars. Um, I can assure you, Ken does that. Um, Tony does that as well. Our employees come yelling all the time about about warning tickets they have. Um, so I know that they are doing that. And then also <laughs> having a towing company um, come and move a car that's no longer um, being driven to a more re remote location. I can promise you, I've had that happen twice here. Um, I've had um, a tow truck come and move a car, resident car, um, actually, um, with their permission, um, to another area until they were able to get it um, off campus. So that does happen. So those are all the, um, the questions for those. Some good questions and suggestions there. Um, let's see. The next one deals with, um, with, um, with the quality and cost of food. Um, this was a uh, this was something that was um, presented to an, by a resident that I also had a pleasure of meeting with um, last week. Yes, I just Monday, just uh, last week um, to talk about this, and we had a good meeting. And some of the things that she was concerned about was um, um, expanded, you know, just some of the the proper, the more healthy eating options, and and more things we can have to be heart healthy and less salt and and a more of a better diet. So, you know, I told her. 
this resonate over the over the few years that we've been kind of slowly changing things that you know we've we we have an always available menu of salmon and chicken baked potato sweet potato um, we have a, a salad entree now which is really nice and we try to have vegetables each meal as well and a couple of other things I was able to point out that she didn't know yet, which is which is good because you still learn when you move here, that um, I got her a meeting with uh, one of the dietitians. She's going to be um, meeting with one of the dietitians to help with our menu, see if there's anything she can offer, any suggestions. Also um, got her in touch with um, Kay Bullock, or going to get in touch with Ms. Bullock because they're the food committee, um, so she can bring some of those issues to the food committee. And just reassuring her that Jennifer and George are here. We do have the, um, the suggestions with the happy or not, and that they're always here to help with different issue so um, again that's going to be an ongoing thing with more um, healthy eating and more um, heart healthy things and uh, we're ready to take that on it's just um, it's again 283,000 meals we just got to figure out how to how to make all that work and make everybody happy um, so lastly um, this was a question that was proposed last year and I wanted and they wanted to bring it up again I'm glad they did because I want to make sure everybody knew I've not forgot about it and that was um, read this quick summary I request that Springmore consider an alternate meal plan. Um, there's been no apparent consideration or response to the request um, to this date. Another request is being submitted this year. Um, participants of the 2020 request that a review and a definite time provided for, for expected response. So basically they're, what, they're, what the, a group of residents is wanting is an altered meal plan. Um, instead of having 30 meals um, a month, we have 15 or 20 meals a month. Um, I can assure you I've not forgot about it. Um, we are working on that, and I hope to have an answer in the next few months. Um, it's, it's much more complicated than it is just changing it. Um, the first thing that's very complicated is we have to budget for it. We have a budget set for 2020 of, of the amount of revenue we have coming in for resident monthly service fee. Again, that's just one of many things that make up the resident service fee. So it's a budgeting thing we have to look at. It's a contract issue we have to look at. We have to change our contract because it's in there of 30 meals, uh, one meal a day, 30 meals a month. And then also that to be approved by the Department of Insurance. It just doesn't happen overnight, I can assure you that. So it just takes, it's just a lot more involved to it, but we are not, uh, we've not forgot about it. And I'm actually going to have a meeting with a, with, um, with a handful of residents that originally submitted this, um, hopefully next week, and just make sure they understand the current meal plan and make sure I understand exactly what they are wanting so I can take this back to management and see what we can come up with. So... Those are my nine questions and suggestions I had. I hope I answered those as thorough as possible. hope I did not talk too fast. And if you have any questions or more um, specific things you want to know about, please let me know. I'm always here. Ms. Pegg said she has not seen me in a while. I can assure you I'm here. I've been held up in my office for a little bit. But, um, but I'm here, and things are going well. I hope you all are continuing to see good progress in what we're doing. The health center, the kitchen. I got to see the kitchen today of what they've already done and gutted. It's, it's, it, it looks really neat. So we're moving right along with that. Mobile kitchen's up and running. So with that said, as my favorite singer-songwriter Scott Miller says, I'll move on to better things. I'll be Mr. Ammons come and talk to you about something I'm really excited for him to share with you that we're going to be doing here soon at Springmore. Thank you all so much. Good afternoon. I've been David here a long time. Brandon likes Mr. Ammon, so um, we'll, we'll work on that. Um, as I said, my name is David Ammons, and I want to go over something that's a very new and exciting, I'm going to call it an announcement. It's something that has been happening for some time, so it's, it's not brand new in evolution, if that makes sense to you. It's something that's been, been happening. Um, for about 20 years, 25 years maybe, I come up here every year, and I talk about what we have on the horizon. And that has historically been construction or renovation or remodeling. Um, we, we've tackled over those years the new lobby at South Village. We've tackled the new lobby at North Village. We've tackled the changes to the Supportive Living Center, which I know a lot of you are very involved in. Uh, we are currently doing some changes in the kitchen and everything, as, as Brandon mentioned. Um, it's, it's involved in the past some changes to the South Village dining room. Now, some of that was long ago enough that maybe it is the way it was when you moved in. But trust me, a lot of those things have changed over the years. Um, the next thing that we've worked on for years and years is where and, and how the direction of Stewart Health Center is moving. 
Um, I discussed one year that we were going to do a new wing. It was named the C-Wing and had to do with uh, memory, Alzheimer's, dementia type thing. And we added that. Again, some of you have, it's probably always been here for you, but it, it was not originally. The Clayton Wing is something that we added. The idea of having um, exclusive private rooms was something that we worked on for a long time. Um, and then, of course, everything that's going on now, Brandon can tell you more than I can about um, the new changes to the health center, moving towards a residential model, having more entrances, um, grouping together the assisted living. There's a lot going on there that I think is um, very, very exciting. What I want to talk about today is not construction and it's not remodeling. It is programmatic. It may have some capital costs associated with it at some point, but at this point, it, it is programmatic. And it's something that actually, as I was sitting back here getting ready to, to speak, I realized that what Juliana mentioned is evidence of it. Some things Brandon mentioned about what Lee and Carrie is, um, are already doing is evidence of it. But it has to do with really looking at two directions. And those directions are um, involve what I see happening industry-wide. Some of you may or may not know, but um, between Kyle and Brandon and I, we try to keep a wide um, spread on different associations and different meetings. And so there are some local meetings that occur in our industry. There are some statewide industry, uh, statewide meetings that occur in our industry, as well as some national. Um, I, I participate in the Urban Land Institute um, Senior Housing Council, which is very exciting because it's a national group. In fact, it must be beyond national because um, in May the meeting's in Toronto, so we'll call that um, broader than national. And I know the Urban Land Institute is is global in its in its span. Um, but what I see happening in, in a lot of things going on is something that I have um, been planning and thinking about for a couple of years, but a whole lot this past year. Um, and I'm thrilled that um, Brandon announced in a recent resident memo that uh, Richard Settle is going to be helping me specifically with that. There's also a lady that some of you may have met but may not named Helen Rhodes. Helen has been in my office, not here at Springmore, been in my office for about 20 years and has been working a couple years on on where we think a lot of this is going. Um, if you're ready for what the this is, I'm going to get to that um, now. But um, it has two directions, and it's it's rather complicated to me because sometimes the, the two directions are very separate, and other times the two directions overlap a good bit. Um, the first one is often called three different names that people use, which is either CCRC at home or CCRC without walls, or um, in the statute, it's called CCRC without lodging. Um, but it's, it's an exciting way that some communities are reaching out to people that don't live in the continuing care retirement community, but participate as residents. And I'll give you a little more detail on that in just a few minutes. The next one is one that is very exciting to me and one that I've met with Lori and Juliana and Carrie and Leah about. And I want to be very clear, I was very clear to them, but I will emphasize it here again also. Um, the Pathways program is great. When we were working on that years ago, it has evolved and, and become its own type of program, um, probably better than we envisioned at the beginning. But what I want to really look at now is expanding on Pathways. Um, some people call an expanded Pathways whole person wellness. Some people call that um, conscious aging, which, which sort of opens up a lot of doors and where that conversation could go. Um, first, I want to talk just a minute about the CCRC without lodging. Some of our communities in the Triangle, in particular Carroll Woods and Carolina Meadows, have really jumped into that. They use the term called early acceptance programs. And what they're doing, which we're looking at, but I... Um, but I'll get to the conclusion in a minute, but I will tell you we're looking at it, is they're basically expanding what it means to be on the waiting list. So if you pay at one of the communities $13,000 up front, another community $36,000 up front, and anywhere from $600 to $1,000 a month, then you basically become a full-fledged resident, even though you have not relocated yet. So the theory is that um, you, you benefit from um, access to amenities that could be the swimming pool it could be the dining room it could be the auditorium you see we have so much open space here today 
it'd be nice to have them. Um, I'm being facetious. I, I know we're full. Um, but so, so people are looking at that. I will say that I don't think that we favor that. Um, I, I, I think Springmore is large. The early acceptance program is more financial, in my opinion, than anything else. And it's a belief that if we have all this pent up demand, we should probably go ahead and try to capture that and get these people committed to coming to our community. We've not found that necessary. Um, I, I think that our waiting list works well. Our waiting list has grown. Um, as units become available today, they're generally filled from the waiting list. So an idea of people don't live here but are basically residents, um, not basically, and in one contract, um, in one of those communities, it says full-fledged residents, um, is not a direction that I think we're trying to go. Um, I do want to say one thing, and this is where they overlap, though. Um, Springmore is 35 years old, and it has been an institution and a resource for a lot of things for a lot of years. And so we, management and with the board, have been looking at what else could we do or should we do or might we do. And, and um, you know, that, that's a wide open definition of where that could go. But I know that residents already participate with Meals on Wheels. I know you participate in helping stop hunger now. Um, all those things are wonderful for our broader community. They're also wonderful for us to document, which is what we're going to start working on a lot more, because as a 501c3 nonprofit, it's very important that we document that we're not simply a, a commune and taking care of people here. We don't want to spend money to take care of people somewhere else per se, but we would like to look at how we could assist with that. Um, a few ideas that have been bounced around is home care. We now do Springmore home care here at Springmore, as I'm sure you know, but we could also do Springmore home care um, to Raleigh. And, and there's, a, there's a mile limit on how far it could go and a few things, but, but we could be doing that. There's a lot of people who associate the name Springmore with positive, and so we think the home care option might be good. It might be good if we only offered it to our waiting list, um, we've discussed doing that. We've also discussed maybe offering it to the public, but making it a cheaper price for people on our waiting list, just to those kinds of things. We also are good at some things that I think a lot of people who don't live here would benefit from. Um, now, if you've had pro problems with this recently, don't raise your hand, but generally speaking, um, I think we're really good at the insurance assistance program that we use, helping people track all their all their bills, all their EOBs, all those details. Um, that's something that we could offer to a broader market, to a broader group of people than just Springmore. Um, we could charge a fee for that, that type of thing. So we're looking at that. I also think that seniors in Raleigh could benefit a great deal from our expertise with respect to prescription medication assistance. A lot of people, as you know, get um, prescriptions added on top of prescriptions. And, and don't really have a way to assess, um, have we gone too far, do we have too many medications, et cetera. So, so we've looked at that. Um, there's some simpler things that we've looked at also. Um, we could help people look at um, scheduling housekeeping, scheduling transportation, um, scheduling meals. That's not something that we would necessarily do from Springmore, but it's something that we could help them assess the marketplace and, and who's doing what. So all those are at this point ideas that I think sound like CCRC at home or CCRC without lodging, but are in fact just ways that we could um, use the expertise that we have to, to help a broader group. Um, I, I think that's important. I will share in the board, when, and I discussed it in great detail last September. Um, it's an important thing to really look at what do we do for our residents. Of course, that's the top priority, but then what do we as an institution have the ability to help people on a broader reach. Now, I know some of you in, in one letter that we already got are worried about that costing the residents. Um, we're, we're very focused that that would not be the case. I would like to be able to offer those kinds of things as affordable as possible, um, not trying to make them a profit center, but, but I'm aware that you didn't come here to help give meals to people that don't live here. So, so, so we're, we're aware of that and, and focused on that. Um, the next 
leg, if you will, that I, I mentioned before is the idea to expand um, on Pathways program. It's too early today. Please do not take examples that I give you and, and tell us later what happened to this or what the heck were you thinking with that. Um, we're really exploring it. Richard and I meet regularly. Richard and Helen and I meet regularly. Um, I know Helen's getting ready to meet with uh, Carrie and Leah and Juliana and Lori, so there's just a lot going on with that. But I want to see us really push the envelope. Seniors of tomorrow, you know, we use that phrase a lot. So people that are currently 60 to 68, maybe, so there's some, some broad definition there, but that will become candidates for Springmore, I think are looking for new ways and new ideas and new stretches. Um, I like to use a really simple example, and this sounds a little bit comical, but, but it really is very true. In 1985, in June, because I'm coming up on my 35th anniversary working here, but in June of 85, we were opening the East Apartments, and one of my jobs was signage. And so when I got to the room, if you go across the, uh, the, where the shuffleboard is and go in right there, that room on the right, I ordered a sign that said men's exercise room. Well, that lasted about a day, as you can imagine. <laughs> um, I was young and naive and stupid, so um, uh, we'll, we'll accept that. But, but literally, if you, uh, well, you, nobody here I would think would know that room, but I'll tell you, that room had about three pieces of equipment. One of them was a treadmill. It was very archaic, you know, it was, it was 35 years ago. One of them, which I always get a kick out of, was one of those machines you may have seen on TV, or maybe you had one, that had a big belt on it and you put the belt on your backside and it shook you. So um, uh, to this day, I don't know what that did. I guess if you fight the shaking, you're tightening muscles or something. I, I, I never know. Those went away. So we're happy to say they didn't last. There was also one of those um, Schwinn bicycle, stationary bicycles in there that had the big fan on the front and you moved your arms like that. And it was actually nice because it created a breeze as you were using it. But I say all that a little bit comical because, as you know, if you go from a men's exercise room to a resident exercise room, which took 24 hours, to um, where we are now 35 years later with the new movement room, the exercise room, um, two swimming pools, the classes that we do, what I just heard Juliana talking about with grief um, classes, to me, that's whole person wellness. It's as important to us that we address um, how are you coping with something or how are you looking at what's next. We've been talking a lot about um, world religion discussion groups and stuff. Um, frankly, we were, we were sharing the other day, wouldn't it be nice to have a discussion group that offended a couple people in the room? Um, that sounds funny, but I really do want us to stretch. I want us to look at, at what do we discuss, what can we um, turn into, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of intellectual property here, and there's a lot of that could come out of, in my opinion, pushing that envelope a little bit further. It's certainly what the, the next generation, if you will, of seniors wants to talk about is, is how do I benefit as a person living at Springmore? You know, um, Kyle and I talk a lot about, generally speaking again, now please don't raise your hand, but um, food service happens well 283,000 times a, a year according to Brandon um, activities happens well housekeeping happens well transportation generally happens well I know some of you've been left at the hospital I know some of your maids didn't show up and I, I'm aware of that but generally speaking we're pretty good at those things and so it kind of becomes a so what you know okay we're good at that we ought to be we've been doing that a long long time what is next and so we really want to, to push that envelope if you will as to what is next and how it deepens and strengthens a person moved here. What I want to do is have you all be able to tell your friends who don't live here, I thought I was moving there for my two bedroom villa and 30 meals a month or 20 meals a month, wherever that goes. Um, but gosh, I have really benefited from this class on grieving over the loss of a child or discussing with my neighbors, um, you know, world religions or, or just different things. I think there's a lot that could come from all of that. So, so we're looking at CCRC at home or 
maybe just doing services for people that don't live here but don't call it CCRC at home. Um, and we're also looking at expanding pathways. And, and those overlap, as, as you, I hope, can understand as I've tried to explain it. Um, in summary, I just want to add we're all very excited about the new opportunities. Um, there are several board members in particular who um, have been in touch with me several times since we discussed it last fall um, who really do agree that, that sort of what is next and where are we going. Um, I've been very involved over the 30 years, 35 years, um, with our property tax. Um, and some 501c3s are property tax exempt and some are not. We won't get into all that today. I've been to the state Supreme Court on that topic, so I could tell you more than you want to know. But one argument for property tax exemption has to do with proving that you were beneficial to a broader community than just here. Um, we want to be financially respectful and, and responsible to here, but we also know, for example, um, I'm going to get into all this, but I'll give you a few examples. When a Sunday school class from the Lutheran Church uses a room over here, um, that is good. That's the type of thing that Springmore has, has resources, we'll call that a space, and people that don't live here benefit from that. Um, even the music programs and stuff like that where um, the broader community comes in, children come in, um, that type of thing. Those are all good ways for us to document that as a nonprofit we're doing good things. Um, on all that, I'll, I'll just tell you, stay tuned. Um, I, I've, I've hit on some of it. I know Richard's standing here wondering why I brought up some things or didn't bring up other things, because we've talked through dozens and dozens of things, but, um, but we are working on that. I think you'll be very pleased with it. I want it to make living here um, better than you expected in these ways that you may not have expected. So, um, so that's what we're trying to do. The second and last topic that I have to touch on, but it's literally just two sentences on my page, is marketing. Every year I stand here and say how much I appreciate you all telling your neighbors, your friends, your Sunday school partners, whatever they are, um, that you like living here. Um, most CCRCs spend lots more than we do in marketing. And I can easily spend in marketing. I, I, I'm, I don't mean I do it casually, but there's many marketing agencies that would want us to do more videos, new websites more often, more ads. I know Brandon put up a new ad. Um, but we don't have to do that. We're very fortunate because, as, as you all know, in marketing, there's a concept of word of mouth. And almost everybody who moves here says, well, I've always known of Springmore, or I have friends or neighbors or sisters or whatever it was um, who live there, and they were very happy. So, um, so I appreciate that. You do help keep our expenses down by helping us with that. As Brandon indicated, um, we're currently full. Now, I heard him say 100%. I know some people challenge that. Um, we count full if the unit is occupied or reserved. So if you have a unit next to you, an apartment that has been empty for two months and you wonder why we say full, it means someone has signed up for it. They're in the 90 day window that we've always had for people to get their affairs in order and sell their house and stuff like that. So um, with that, I will say thank you. It's good to see you all. I know um, more of you than I thought I would. So that's nice to see you all again. Thank you very much. Are we taking questions? The answer is he'd be happy to, so just a moment. Um, I would say yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it was definitely September. It was discussed. There was very positive feedback. I if you ask me to send you minutes that say approved, I can't do that. But yes, sir.
Sure, that's why I mentioned uh, I'm aware that we don't want the residents to pay for it, so we want it to be self-supporting. Um, that's 100% true. Not, not that reports weekly, as you indicated, no. <laughs> that's what you have on your thing. Yes, sir. Sure. Currently, it's a quarter of 1%. So I think that my job has always been as CEO, I know you didn't ask a specific question, you were just speaking, but, but is to look at where are we, what's next, where are we going, um, what it costs to do those things I mentioned, supportive living and new lobbies and new portico, is always been a good bit of money. This one is a lot less than physical capital cost, but um, I'm aware that we don't want it to cost the residents. A quarter of 1% I think is worthwhile exploration. And, and you mentioned several times helping non-residents, helping non-residents, but everything I want to do with expanding pathways is very resident-based. Thank you. I understand. Sure. Sure. Yes, sir. Thank you. We very much want to thank you for a very thought-provoking discussion. And I'd like to say that I am of the current generation, but I'd like to be around a long time to be a part of all of the things that you're doing for the ones that are going to coming in later generations. And I would like to announce that next month's resident association program, we'll be meeting on April 13th, and our speaker will, will be Emily Bernson, and she's speaking about the USO. So I think that will be a very special program. And now I'd like to ask Albert Calloway to come up. Uh, he's going to be pulling the raffle ticket numbers in a little while, but I'm going to give him the opportunity to practice on doing the door prize pulling numbers. And of course, our door prizes are from the uh, First Citizens Bank. No, oh, wait a minute. Are you bringing your own up here? No. <laughs> We are looking at seven seven three five five nine five. All righty. And the next prize winner is 3169.24. Oh, okay. <laughs> And now I'm going to turn the mic over to Peg Bedini, who's the chair of the endowment committee. Peg? First, I just want to start by thanking all of you who participated in the raffle. It is a great honor to me to be chairman of the endowment committee because it is something that I believe in so firmly. I call it neighbors helping neighbors. 
And as you heard Brandon say, for the first time last year, we were able to cover all of the supplements required by residents from the earnings of the endowment. And that is a wonderful milestone that we have reached. You realize that if the endowment earnings do not cover it, the only other way for it to be covered is out of our budget. So it's to all of our advantage to support the endowment. At this time, we're going to draw raffle winners. But before we do, I just want to remind you that our next item of business for the endowment will be our annual indoor yard sale, which will be in July. Remember, we take anything but clothes and books. So start looking around now to see what you have that you can get rid of. This room is actually cram full of items and it's a wonderful benefit not only to residents but to the employees. So anything at all except clothes and books. Okay, Albert, are you ready to draw? You know, a lot of people participated in this raffle, and I certainly want to say thanks to Dave Waters, who handled South Village, and Sylvia Doles, Rose Gabbard, and C.J. Auburn, who took care of North Village, and Bill Marley, who took care of the houses and villas. And certainly, thanks to the anonymous donor who gave the $1,300 in prizes, which I have here. It sure is nice to have money in my hand. <laughs> I hate to part with it. But um, just one thing, as of not much time today, $4,420 have been raised for the raffle. There will be some more funds coming in slightly. And as some of you know, the market has certainly taken a nosedive in the last week or so. But at the close of business last Friday, the value of the fund was $7,842,163.04. Now, the, that $4,000 that you raised with a raffle, with the market down, is going to be a, buy a lot more stock than we could have bought two weeks ago. So. <laughs> This is a permanent thing, it's ongoing, and uh, it will recover. But thank you very much for participating. And now, let me see, what was your direction? <laughs> First of all, This box contains all of the tickets from South Village. So I want you to make sure that I put all of them in here. Chairman of the Endowment Committee is a very honest person, so I'm going to ask her to put them in this corner. And these are the stubs from North Village. Thank you. 
Okay, the first one we draw will be a $50 winner. The first $50 winner is Larry Ald. Larry, are you here? Larry is the editor of our Herald, so that's wonderful that he is one of the winners. Okay? Okay, draw another one. Another $50 winner is Janice Frizzell. Janice, there she is, back there. And the th third one is Bobby Parnell. B. Parnell. Well, we said you didn't have to be here to win, so. It's someone who lives in Valley. Okay. The fourth $50 one is Rose Gabbard. Rose was one of our chairmen of the raffle. <laughs> and the fifth winner of the $50 is Monica Perkins, right here on the front row. One more. That's one, two, three, four, five, so we have one more. One more. And the next $50 winner, and I see her, is Marie Lewis, sitting right back here. Now, according to the rules, the $50 winners could win a $500. So we are going to put them back into the pot and stir them up again. This is a pretty $100 bill. So this is 500, right? Okay, the first $500 winner is Annette Owen. She's from South Village, I know. She's not here. Okay, and the second one is it just says Singleton, so I don't know one or the other from House 47, <laughs> right over here. I think, I think it's Mrs. Singleton. By all means, I think it says Mrs. Singleton. <laughs> Thank you all very, very much on behalf of the endowment. Okay, we're done. And here's the list. I will give it to Judy for the yeah. minute.